All right, from the messy setup, you can definitely get an idea that this was a heavy project. Lots going on with taking your single color design and moving it up to a multi-color stencil. You can see I've got my dark red layer there. A little bit easier to see on the backdrop. But more or less, let's jump into designing your own multi-layer stencil, what you need to prep it up. And then finally, you'll be able to go through and align all your layers together so they look just as good as they do on the digital in this final poster form. So let's jump into it. So to start the design process off, I really want to get into talking about the values I went over in this whole piece. You can see I started off with this kind of five color setup here, went from a dark shade all the way to the light. An important double check that I really like to go through is to change my image down to grayscale. And this is just be a temporary, but you can see kind of that transition of colors here. You've got almost a white on the backdrop that should have kind of been a telltale sign that some of my lighter colors were really super light on this, but altogether kept moving forward and just designed with five different steps in there. And that allowed me to have kind of these breaks and gradients. So you can also see the colors in the kind of three, four range are pretty close in shade as well. So you're gonna wanna also make sure that these are well spread out so you have that variation in value. So let's back out of that. That was just my first pass to get all my layering down. I figured, you know, I could go back with the proper coloring when I did want to. So the green here was a much closer to what my end goal was. And you can see we've got much better darks over here on the left side, giving it a little bit more contrast, still not super black on the darkest shade here. This was kind of me just eyeing it up and trying to get better contrast on this. So it's a huge work in progress. I'm by no means perfect at this. It helps me work through the basics when I go through that grayscale phase, because you really get an understanding about where it lands. And believe it or not, the registration marks are simply just an X pattern or a T pattern. And I make mine sometimes surrounded by a circle. All the circle actually does is add a little bit more data there so you can understand exactly where the rotation is a little bit tighter, or you can even offset the circle so it gives you a kind of a funky shape to align so you really know when it's not set up right. Ideally, you'll have three. In my case, I'll have two in the lower section and one on the top left. And basically just use those three to kind of triangulate your picture once you do have each layer down. And you'll have this consistent between every layer so that when you do stack them all up, they kind of lay down just as they would in that original design. If you have the registration marks far outside the margin of your design, you can commit to actually spraying them down on each layer. And then when you do cut down the extras of the poster or edges of the canvas, you'll actually be able to just crop those right off and you don't have to worry about masking them or having them get too close to the design and then have to cover them up or find another unique solution to get rid of them once they are down on your piece. All right, enough digital work. Let's get to actually cutting some of these out. So I'm going to prep up my sheets ahead of time. I'm going to be using my plotter here. So I found it was best if I actually adhered the mesh to the paper first off and then plotted it right onto that and then peeled off the extra. It kind of seemed to give it that vinyl same kind of weeding process where you uh, first cut out the image and then you can just peel away all the negative space. That was a little bit easier than doing it first off and then trying to glue the mesh on afterwards. It didn't seem to have as good of a bond. So this way it'll uh, have that bond right up front. So if you missed the last video, I went on a super deep dive on how to actually cut out your stencil and how to use this mesh technique. So I'm going to go in kind of an abridged version in this video, but if you want to get more info on that, I'll have that linked in the description and it'll be a great use to get kind of these secret island tutorial on how to get super high detail in these larger formats without having to worry about pieces falling out. So to kick this session off, I ended up spraying down all the paper I was going to cut my stencil out of and then putting the mesh right on top of it. Since I'm going to be using a plotter for all of these layers, I felt that this method worked best because it allowed me to have the mesh and the paper attached to start and then cut into that and then kind of weed all the pieces off of it. When I was trying to first cut it and then lay the mesh down, the tackiness of the mesh and then getting it to dry while the stencil was all in place was kind of a mess with all those tiny little teeny bits. So this worked really well to have everything kind of layered up together, ready to go. And the process was super similar to actually weeding vinyl out. I basically just picked out all the pieces where the design wasn't supposed to be and then had all the pieces right where they needed to be because they were already glued to that mesh and the mesh held it on really nicely. Nice to have the mesh in between here so that I can peel it totally off and the mesh, which didn't get cut at all, hopefully, is kind of holding all the paper in place for now. Now the mesh definitely was still kind of tacky even after letting it dry for a few days. so. I'm going to hopefully encapsulate that with paint on the other side and 
have it kind of glue down a little bit extra. So right now, the paper that I want to keep on the mesh is not as stable as I was anticipating. So I'll have to be careful with some of these small little bits. But for that same reason, I think the small bits will kind of stay tacky so long as I kind of encourage them to stay down. That's a satisfying strip right there. <clears throat> All right, so I finished picking everything out. Now I'm gonna try and do a layer of spray paint on top to kind of encapsulate the tackiness. You can see glue still hasn't dried well after a few days, so I don't think it's drying any further. Alright, I finished cutting out all my stencils, got the first also layer of paint on there to help with the tackiness. It's still coming through a little bit, but I'm hoping just kind of pack it on there with all the other colors as uh, I do spray each of the layers. So no need to kind of worry about it now. It's holding the paper just fine. First color is going to be that dark red. I'm going to build off of that, go all the way to my lightest color, and then finally do the black outline. Of course, got to give the big shout out to Street Smart for hooking these cans up. Going to make this project a nice breeze and awesome with the 94 cans and even those speed cans I'll try with the orange layer. Pumped to see how these turn out. So although it is the first layer, it doesn't quite matter exactly where it's placed on the paper. But I'm just going to kind of anchor it down with a couple cans so that it doesn't move if I am kind of touching it and making sure while I spray nothing shifts out of place. Okay, so you can see here we've got the registration marks sprayed through just on that red layer. I'm going to spray it through on each of these just because it's the first, first layup to get it tested. Basically just come in here and position your cutout really close on that edge. And then as you can see, I've got this one aligned, but this one's way off. So now that's when you got to get the rotation in and make sure that that's all positioned. And then normally if you get the bottom two in place, Ooh, it's a little hard with it being so tacky, but pick somewhere that you can hold on lightly. Normally if you get these bottom two in place, the top one on the far corner will also come in line. Then I'm just going to put my cans down once it's kind of set. See that's pretty well put on there. Got a teeny bit of white on the edge there, but it should be close enough. Yeah, the third one. Uh, another tip, I actually did lose some of the little inside sections. Because of the exterior line, I was able to align those just fine. So even if you don't have all these interior edges, hopefully the shape's kind of unique enough that you'll be able to position it just fine. All right, ready for the next layer. It's a little hard to see the registration here, but looking pretty close, and I guess as the all the layers come down, we'll be able to really tell how close each layer actually lines up. video just stopped recording as I pulled off that so maybe we lost a little bit maybe we lost a lot of it but man I really was having a hard time thinking these colors were gonna look good before that black outline but that really cut it all together super nicely something about this the perfect black outline totally get the contrast that you need going Wow very excited that, that kind of translated well from uh, digital all the way here 
pipe that the, the gold maybe hit ups on there. I'm gonna try and do a layer on top with that and see how that looks. This hatching in here is really sweet. I think I'm gonna try and leverage that a little bit more. It's that mesh kind of coming through. You can also see it up on the black areas there. And aside from that, just a little bit of kind of overspray down in that area. Didn't quite press in the warp area, but uh, altogether, very happy with the first spray. Alignment looks pretty good. You can see some little spots where edges didn't quite line up, but honestly, I like how it's coming together. And I was thinking maybe of doing a first pass with the warp section and trying to get maybe some deliberate shading up in that area. So let's uh, see how that works on round two. on the backdrop and then the black background definitely makes this very nice you can see I some little spots here paper just to hold off on the registration marks coming through but allow me to kind of keep them to line my layers it's looking sweet almost has a bit of a glossier hit now that I did that full back layer as well versus let me grab one of the other ones you can see it's a little more muted without a layer of paint to kind of first take in to the paper I like in the glossy look quite a bit so taking it from the single color to the mids and the dark tones we finished up this massive poster session can't say how happy I am that I ended up trying it on that dark black background. The kind of white backdrop was working well just you know on the first pass but ultimately my favorites are definitely the dark backdrop. The black with the little bit of spray over top kind of give it a unique space theme there and then ultimately just couldn't be happier with how all the colors lined up. You know it's always a testament to try to pick colors out online and have them really coordinate well. So I'm super happy the contrast is all there. The layering works super well. Those registration marks that are now kind of cut off all the edges. Got some down here. Lined up perfectly. I ended up not even needing much more than the exterior edge of each of them. I pretty much focused in on those and then didn't really worry about the middle just because I lost a few of those depending on the color. But I uh, ultimately sprayed one down, kind of taped off that area and then that made for alignment really tight. So I don't see much you know, mismatch and overspray from the edges. And even without doing that kind of temporary tack, my lines were super crisp. The, the weight of that mesh over top of the stencil just gives it some kind of uniform weight all throughout and helps press down those middle sections and the edges even still. You know, just that little bit of extra weight goes a super long way. So needless to say, I'm definitely a fan of the mesh style. And then like even in the eyeballs where I was trying to deliberately get you know, a lighter spray on that black, kind of gave it a little bit more depth in there. And that was a pretty sweet kind of unforeseen bonus that it would translate that well. I tried it out in that one color session, but ultimately everything just really layered on top super well with all five layers. And obviously a huge shout out to those guys over at Street Smart. Helping me out with all these cans made this project really come through and I can't thank them enough. It's amazing to see them be able to support a project like this really from start to finish. I showed them the concept art and they were super hyped to jump in on it. So once again, thank you to them. Go show them some love and maybe get your next round of paint from them. So that's pretty much going to do it for the multi-layer stencil on the poster or kind of canvas tutorial here. Be sure to check out the previous video if you missed anything on how to do the single color with all the mesh details. And that focuses on the kind of the mesh portion of this, so how you can get a stencil with a ton of detail and a ton of islands on there, and not to mention print it huge. So this one's, you know, 
well over a foot in both directions. And then on the next video, we're going to be doing something with the t-shirts and going through that process. So watch out for that. Spray that like button if you enjoyed the process and enjoyed the final product. Always fun to see the responses there. And then also feel free to subscribe if you're interested in catching some more of the details of the future portions of this project or maybe something else I get into. It's really going to do it for me, guys. Peace.